Hi everyone, uh, my name is Derek and this is just the continuing series for the heuristic and pattern data recognition in, da uh, in marketing data. Uh, and for this series, I am uh, teaching you how to understand what is targeting using decision trees. Uh, in the previous video, I have done uh, an introduction of what segmentation, targeting and positioning is and how we can use um, uh, clustering um, and this, to do segmentation and this one is where we're going to use targeting to use this uh, to do decision tree. Now before I begin uh, I would like to explain to you what is actually a decision tree. So if you notice that a decision tree is just basically what it is it's a tree. Yeah. So just imagine a tree that goes the other way around right you notice that a lot of trees always goes from the roots up to the leaves but this one you start from the roots on the top and then it goes down to the leaves so here's where you see the uh, root node yeah and then the branches that branch out and these terminal nodes are what we call as the uh, leaf nodes. So if you are looking at deciding on what type of uh, things you want to find out based on the leaf nodes, so just look at all the leaf nodes and then traverse the tree up and then you will see the characteristics like for instance like this one the non-mammals cold body temperature it's known as a non-mammal but if it's a warm body temperature and it doesn't give birth it is also known as a non-mammal right so that is just what a tree is you can also do the same thing by traversing this particular tree here to find out so I'm going to give you a, uh, an example of how do we know what characteristics uh, is needed uh, based on the tree so for example, if you look at this tree here and the decision is, should I accept a, a new job offer? So therefore, uh, the target that we're trying to look at is whether or not we want to accept a new job offer. So if we're looking at the tree uh, here, we can see that there is only one leaf node that says accept offer, correct? All right. So now let's traverse the tree and find out what are the characteristics that will reach to this particular decision here. So if I start from the root node, I'm saying salary at least 550,000. No, I decline offer. Yes, I continue to traverse. Commute more than one hour. If I don't commute more than one, uh, more than one hour, then then I continue to traverse the tree but if it's more than one hour I decline the offer and then of course offer free coffee yes obviously who doesn't like coffee so three decisions here would make me accept the job offer number one salary at least 50,000 number two do not commute more than one hour and number three offers free coffee yeah, and then that's when I accept the offer. So for this particular example, I'm going to be teaching you how to use SPSS to do this kind of decision tree, right? Now, uh, the data set that I'm using is from a telco company, and uh, I want to find out basically who are my churners. So the churners will be a target variable that has a yes and a no. But I am more concerned about those with a yes. That means those people who have churned, uh, changed service providers within the last month. So I want to find out what are the characteristics of those people that has changed uh, service providers within the last month. The algorithm I'm going to be using is this thing called the chat uh, algorithm or formerly known as, uh, also known as the chi-square automatic interactive detection uh, algorithm. Now, this algorithm is good, especially if you feel that there is some missing data, it actually deals with the missing data, 
and your target variable there's the dependent variable here can be either categorical or numerical and the independent variables are factors that divides the two uh, categories or if you have more categories you can also use that as well and for less data set you might want to increase the child minimum cases and I'll tell you what that is now remember the leaf uh, uh, notes that I told you about okay okay right here is where you do the dependent variable here's where you put the independent variables I'll simulate this on SPSS for you now the leaf in case that you have very small amounts of uh, data sets uh, sometimes the leaf uh, if you put it at a certain number you may not be able to get a very big tree and I'll show you what that means uh, in that that is why it is always good for you to increase the child node so the default here is 50 I'll show you one that does 50 for you but if you want more characteristics you might have to in, uh, minimize this to maybe five later on okay um, so I'll take you to this example right now okay so basically what I have now here um, is my um, uh, telco data set as I mentioned to you sorry and uh, I'm going to be using all the variables here to try and figure out the tree for me um, I also mentioned to you that the data target variable that I'm using here is the churn target variable uh, which is those that has churned within the last six months which is a yes and those did not churn is a no okay and uh, very important make sure that you set the variable uh, view the variable your dependent variable that you want to split your tree set it as target right now it is at input but make sure you set it as the target so that's the target variable that's why it's called the target variable okay so here's what you do go to analyze Go to classify go to tree then press ok sorry I'm just resetting everything don't worry about it now first find the dependent variable yeah that is the one with the churn and it is in categorical okay you don't have to worry too much about this one okay next put all the variables yeah Put all the variables inside the independent variables we just want to see which variables come out uh, uh, important to us for us to use now the higher the variable appears on the tree the more important that variable is once we turn out the tree I'll explain to you a little bit more so the growing method here we're using is a shade as I mentioned uh, you notice the criteria here the child note is 50 as I mentioned to you the child note the number of cases for the child note is 50 now we we'll just run the tree right now and I'll show you what I mean it does take a while for you to run the tree yeah so no worries too much okay Alright, so I have uh, run my tree. Now, within this tree, you can see, uh, you may not be able to see this uh, properly. Uh, what I've done is, this is the result that has come out, that has turned out. I, what I do is, I double click this tree, uh, sorry, this window here, and this window will come out. Okay, this window will come out. Now, usually what I do is I just copy and paste this over into my PowerPoint. And I'm going to show you on my PowerPoint this. Yeah, this is your PowerPoint here. Okay, so let's just try zooming in um, the various places where I want to see a yes. I see a lot of no's no's, 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 no's because I'm not interested, but I do see. A yes here 
here, here, and here. Okay, so let's traverse the tree now. So it gives me uh, categories, and then it also gives me the uh, uh, number of um, uh, what do you call this? The the number of cases. Now, uh, for me to traverse the tree. I notice that my first variable here is equipment over tenure. Okay, so equipment over tenure is just a ratio that we're calculating. So you need to go and find out what this uh, equipment over tenure is or whatever variable that you're using. Now, equipment over tenure is a ratio that is calculated in the number of equipment over the number of years that you actually use and, and use the service. And uh, for a yes, it has to be within zero to 870. For those people who are churned. Okay. Now, after seeing this, another one is months of service. Now, the months of service is broken down into less than six months and more than six months. If you notice those less than six months, they also churned. Right? Yeah? Equipment will service and then less than six months. But if those with more than six months, there is an added category that you might have to look at is whether they have used voicemail or not. And you notice that those who have churn actually use voicemail. So in essence, how many categories do you actually have that will show or how many sets of characteristics that shows you uh, the people who have churn? In essence, if you traverse the tree down, is one, one terminal node. So you just have to calculate the terminal node and then one more. So there's two. So traversing the tree down will give you the number of characteristics. Okay, so what do we have then? This is it. So what are the notable characteristics of those who churned within the last month? The first target, we understand the characteristics is equipment over tenure, 0 to 870, with less than 6 months of service. This is one target. And then the other target is the people with equipment over tenure 0 to 870 with more than 6 months service and people who use voicemail. Now with this target, excuse me, sorry. So with this target, now you can actually understand the two important uh, segments and by knowing what actually constitutes them to uh, churn, you can try to make some alternative arrangements for them like maybe if they have been using their voicemail maybe they have not been using uh, for example like this target here if they've been using voicemail and they've been churning perhaps maybe the uh, service of the voicemail may not have been good now this is actually quite uh, uh, important for you to find out. So perhaps maybe you might want to call the people who fall under this target and ask them about their uh, service of voicemail. Now if it's found out that the service of voicemail is not good, then you might have to do something about it to stop these people or to stop those who are about to churn to uh, not change service. Okay? So this is how you do a uh, decision tree. In fact, there are many, many other ways that you can do it. Uh, there are, you can put in more categories if you want. Uh, if let's say you have done your segmentation and then you have created the segments and you want to create the uh, decision tree or the characteristics of each of the segments, you can also do that. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm just showing you within two categories and the characteristics that fall under these two categories. And the one cate uh, category I'm very uh, particular with is the one that has churned. Okay, so if you have any questions, please uh, contact me. If not, thank you very much for listening and watch out for the next video that talks a little bit about using multidimensional scaling for positioning. Thank you.